shit. I might just hit your bitch out walking the park. What's up, everybody? I'm Darren Randall. Welcome back to Let It Be Known. We got Lamar in here, and we just came up one of the craziest days of football, not even just the game. It was a Thursday night football game. We finally had a good Thursday night football game, too, because, you know, we've been having the Broncos. We've been having a lot of trash-ass teams, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Hell yeah, you're right, for sure. It's been, you know, Amazon kind of wasted their money, it feels like, in a way, this season at least, because, you know, they bought all these primetime games, all these Thursday night games, and a lot of people are legally streaming. I'm not going to I'm not going to say no names, but... You know, uh, for people that's paying, pay actually have to pay for Prime. I don't, I don't feel like it's been worth it so far. But today, might have, you might have got your money's worth. What you sure. think? You think, you, you, you think it's a little? You think Amazon Prime's getting better? Oh, for sure. I feel like this game definitely. It's funny because the announcers tonight kind of made a comment. One of them made a comment and said, um, "You know, this game tonight made up for all the other games. Just this one Hell game." No. And <laughs> I, I would say it's funny that you say that too. The other <laughs> announcer was like, "Not quite, but." We on the right track. Like this game definitely, definitely was more entertaining than all the other games so far on Thursday night. But I'm glad this. Yeah, I, I low key like even on paper, like we went like when uh pregame. I knew this was gonna be a good game. I didn't know it was gonna score a lot of these points. I mean, I, I didn't know there was gonna be a high score game like this, but I knew it was gonna be a real good game though. All right, so it was a good game. So the the Cardinals end up winning, beating the Saints forty two to thirty four. And on the first drive, you got you got Andy Dalton coming in, controlling the team. He's he's over here, you know, full 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 motion. He's in control, calm offense. He comes in, he throws a straight dime over the top of like two safeties, and mm -hmm. for the touchdown. And then the next drive, you go in, uh, the Cardinals come back, they score with a field goal, and then the. The Saints, they're going, they're going three for three on third down. Like they're starting well on third down. The ball's moving nicely. But then you got you got the Saints in their own end zone and they throw a pick. You got Andy Dalton, he throws a pick. And it was a it was a forced pick. It was a third down. You really should have been going for the field goal because that would have brought your team up 10 to 3. Instead, Andy Dalton forces some dumb shit up in up in the red zone. Uh Cardinals get a pick. They drive down. Now you got a seven to six game. Okay. It's looking good. Saints get the ball back. They're moving down the field once again. Taysom Hill. They're they're throwing a lot of screen plays. They would look good. I like it. Taysom Hill, you know, mixing the run game in a little bit. Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton looked efficient for the most part before that pick. Uh they they come in, they score the ball. Now you got a 14 to 6 game. Cardinals get the ball. And if you look at the game, so Cardinals finally, they finally started getting some momentum. They're driving the ball in. They're trying to get, they're trying to get D Hop in. This is his first game back. And then so you got D when D Hop. D Hop, I feel like D Hop kind of changed the game. We, you feel like D Hop, he brought a lot of momentum to the team. I feel like they didn't have previously. For sure, D Hop. I think he had over 100 yards tonight, or close to it. But I um, mean, he had like about like eight, maybe eight receptions tonight. Um, maybe even double digits. But I think it was about eight, seven, eight receptions tonight. But he, yeah, he so brought he, out. He definitely brought exactly. out tonight. He definitely filled the void, especially since Marquise Brown is out for you know for a while. So they definitely exactly. just uh, straight balling, straight balling. So when when the Cardinals drive down the field, uh, it's a, it's a, I want to say it's like a third and six. Kyler Murray calls timeout and he's walking over to Cliff 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 Kingsbury and you see him chewing out. Everyone's looking at Kyler like, "What the fuck's going on?" He's just chewing him out. And I, I wasn't. I, what did you think he said? I couldn't really tell. So on the clip that I seen, um, it just looked like he said, "Calm the fuck down." Like he was telling his coach to calm the fuck down. So. Like you mentioned earlier, I, you know, maybe like, you know, they after the timeout, he was yelling this. So maybe in the headset, maybe Kingsbury was in his ear, you know, yelling, you know. And it's funny because this goes back to, to when, you know, when they, they played the Eagles, when he was like, oh, they were in my ear saying like, spike it, spike it, spike it. So, yeah. you know, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, this yeah. game, they was in his ear again, like saying, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And he probably was like, man, like, calm the fuck down. Like, you know, like, you know, maybe it was like, trying said, to feel like that. Do you think they trying to control Kyler a little bit too much? Um, not necessarily control him, but I feel like they trying to like do too much. Like maybe not control him too much, but they trying to like do too much. Like Golden Staff trying to make like the play calling maybe too difficult than what it should be, or like or you know trying to or kind of like or he not trying to make it difficult, but maybe maybe they are. And Kyler is like, bro, like calm down. Like you don't need to be doing this or you don't need to do that. You know, cause I feel Kyler. Bro, Kyler Murray, I'm not going to lie. I feel like Kyler Murray is a, a super smart player. Um, I feel like with the right coaching, uh, I feel like Cliff Kingsbury was, you know, maybe I, maybe not, but I thought, I thought he was a good coach for Kyler. But I feel like overall, if Kyler is really good with a good coach, I feel like Kyler, Kyler Murray, his, the sky is the limit for this guy. So this guy is a proven quarterback. He's been balling since high school. 
I don't know if you know this, but he was undefeated all four years. He been, bro, he played freshman year as on varsity. Who knew? Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of players don't do this in high school. Freshman year on varsity, this guy went undefeated his whole time in Texas football on varsity. Yeah. Won state championships and everything. So this guy, this guy is a great player. He's smart. He's been playing the game for a long time. You know, you got a lot of these coaches that ain't been, they ain't really played. They they been coaching football, but they ain't played it. They ain't been in the, that you know game time situation. So. I feel like it's like it's definitely miscommunication between those two for sure. Honestly, I don't feel like Cliff Kingsbury is a bad coach. Though. I feel like Kyler Murray just has some maturing to do because if you've seen yeah. it, D Hop got in the middle of the, of the two trying to you know calm the situation down. Kyler Murray was he was the aggressor in the situation. He's showing out of his yeah. character. He's kind of showing what everyone was been saying about him. You know, he's immature. He does stuff. Uh, in bad situations where you got D Hop and Kingsbury keeping their calm, not letting the camera see no, no, uh, no argument, no, no friction. And I feel like that was a little immature on Kyler's part. I feel like you, you should be, especially as a starting quarterback, getting they just paid you also. You should be keeping your cool at all times, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, to opinion. be honest, in my opinion, is I mean, I, I agree, but then again, I kind of like not to say I disagree, but I feel like it's just you know, emotions are running high. Um, it was early in the game, though. I believe it was like the second quarter when this happened. Like, like, yeah. like, like later, later in the second quarter, like time was running down by close to halftime. Um, but uh, now, yeah, I feel like you know, you know, most of running high, but you know, shit, time just changed, man. Like, shit, you gotta tell these coaches sometimes, like, you know, not to say you gotta tell them how it is, but you know, you gotta tell them like, hey, man, this is not working. Like, let's do this. Like, you know, you keep calling this bogus ass plays, or you keep doing this. We need to do this. Like, but I see it. You not, you not in my position to see it. So I feel like maybe, like you said, he could have, you know, went about it a certain way, not yelling at him, but he could have put his coach to coach. Like, you know, we got to draw up this or you know stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm all with the players letting the coaches know. I just feel like kind of because the situation, because everyone already knows like the, what's going on a little bit with like between them two. I feel like you kind of wanted to keep it away, keep it away from the field. But like you said, it happens, you know, the tensions is high. They both want to win. It's a lot of drama. It's a lot of outside noise. And and sometimes that could create friction between the team. Yeah. So and, and, and this was a big game and, you know, for both teams, you know, both teams is two and five. And I feel like shit, whoever was winning this game, we're going to pretty much kind of like, you know, attempt to turn a season around for the most part, especially the Cardinals since they, you know, had some players back like D-Hop, you know, especially a star player like him, so. Yeah, exactly. It was, this was, I think, I felt like this was a good game to bring D-Hop back in also, you know, bring oh, yeah. it back in the mix. Not too difficult, but not not too easy. I felt like it was a, it was a solid team for D-Hop to be going against. But um, later, so after, so after that, after the little conflict, the Cardinals end up scoring off a, off a run, and the Cardinals go for the two-point conversion, get it, that ends up bringing the score 14 to 14. Dolphins have – not Dolphins. Uh, the, the Saints go in. Saints go in. They get the ball. They have an opportunity to the score. And for some reason, you got you got Andy Dalton. He throws a bonehead pick. Or, no, actually, no. This was the first one. The, the first one, it went off – it went off – what's his name? Uh, shoulder – shoulder pass. Yeah, yeah, Callaway went off. Callaway shoulder pass bounced off. Goes in, goes in the air. Corners right there, right in the perfect spot. Takes it back for the touchdown. Now somehow Saints just lost the lead, just like that. They get the ball back. It goes like one or one or two plays, and then now you got a heavy rush. Andy Dalton makes a bonehead decision for some reason. He he, I don't even feel like I don't know. Would you blame that on him? Because he threw the pick, um, but he got he got hit on the he got hit on it. So that I don't I don't know if that controlled the ball too much i don't know if it, maybe he should not even try throwing it yeah i was i would blame him no matter what on that play just because i feel like even i feel like because he was pressured i feel like he threw it like he threw it because he he thought his guy was open but his guy wasn't open even like even if it wasn't no pressure because like like the like i seen it too like Andy Dalton clearly didn't see that linebacker sitting there and that linebacker was just waiting and that was, yeah that, so you think I, either way it would have probably been a pick yeah, it would have been a pick no matter what, low key. So I said, Tim, he was sitting there and he made a play. But definitely that pass rush uh, definitely helped that. Definitely helped the interception though for sure. And I, I feel like it doesn't make no damn sense that you throw two interceptions in less than two minutes, bro. Like I think they got the ball I back guess. at two minutes, yeah. two minutes, twelve seconds, and you like you said, I think you said you went to go use the bathroom real quick. You come back and they already scored twice. Yeah, that was crazy. I seen the first interception happen. Um, you know, shit. I went to commercial break. You know, after a touchdown. Shit, I went to the bathroom real quick. I come back. I swear, to, like, bro, it was crazy. Like, I just see Isaiah Simmons 
in the end zone, like dancing. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, what the hell just happened? And then they showed a replay, and I'm just like, come on. Um, come on, Andy Dalton. And I feel like after that second half, you know, the Saints tried getting back into it. But I feel like after those two interceptions, it was no coming back. The momentum was in the Arizona Cardinals' favor. And I feel like the scoreboard probably makes the game look a lot better than it was. I don't feel like the game was as close as what it may seem. Mm-hmm. Uh, court, towards garbage time, towards really this whole game looked like the Arizona Cardinals' defense wasn't putting too much effort. I don't know. I feel like a lot of a lot of times that the Saints were scoring, a little bit more effort could have stopped a lot of these plays. Yeah, in my opinion, I feel like um, I feel like the defense played pretty well, especially like I mean, I feel like yeah, I feel like they did. I feel like they did okay. Um, they put, I feel they like that. Thirty-four against Andy yeah. Dalton. I like yeah. the Saints. I'm, I know it's a good Saints team, but it's Andy Dalton. Yeah. He doesn't put up thirty-four. True. I mean, Andy Dalton is a veteran, veteran QB though. He's definitely one of the more better backup quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, so he could be a starter at you know, well, he was a starter a few years ago, but um. I feel like, um, you know, I'm sorry. What was I about to say? Oh, so I feel like literally the uh, the Cardinals, yeah, I feel like they even felt okay. But I feel like what really, you know, obviously put them over the hump was them two turnovers for real, especially the turnovers that went for touchdowns, you know. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes when you get a turnover and, he's, you know, and the team gets the ball, it's sometimes hard to score in the red zone. They might, you know, end up with a field goal off a turnover. You want a touchdown off of a turnover. So for you to get two pick sixes off a turnover – that's that's incredible, especially right before halftime. And they got the ball back. At and you give them the ball back. Yeah, and they got the ball back at halftime and received the ball. So that also chewed. They didn't score on that drive either, but they they chewed up clock and stuff like that. So I feel like after halftime, I feel like after halftime, really shit. It was the Eno Benjamin show. To be honest, that dude was balling out. Um, they, all they Cardinals really have to do is just run the ball for real, for real. And I feel like this game, Kyler Murray did a great job of using his legs a lot this game as well. So. Credit to coaching staff. You know, he drew up a couple of run plays for quarterback. And one thing I, uh, one thing I, one thing I really liked about after Dalton threw those interceptions, he still kept going to Callaway. He still, he still threw it yeah. to him. I want to say the first time, right after the pick, the first play he throws it to him. He throws it to him, and then the next play he throws it again to him. But he was pushed out of bounds. But I feel like that shows great leadership out of, and you see that out of veteran quarterback. You know, he's been through it. He's been through the ups. He's been through the downs with a lot of these teams. So. He knows how to react. 